Hello Aquarius. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. I had a little trouble beginning your reading today, Aquarius. The a card that wanted to come out of this goddess, a mixture, I have a, a combined deck of goddess and spirit animal knowledge cards. And I was having trouble sort of having the card come to me, choosing the card, having it stand out. And so I, I went to a different deck that raised its hand. And then I was able to sort of come clear on the second card. And I think that this, I don't know, this, this inability to, to choose, to, to know what is right, to uh, an indecision or a, uh, I think that is part of, part of the energy that you may be feeling. That something, right, that something isn't quite right, that you have to look again. So the card that came out of the Oracle of the Hidden Worlds is this mirror card. Other lives, past lives, dimensional lives. But here I think it's really meant to be a mirror. And that it's meant to show you that you have arrived, that all is well. And then we get the Kingfisher. And the back of the card talks about the Kingfisher's mythical, mythological origin. Uh, that there were two people and the, the Saix, the, the man, was drowned and Halcyon, the woman, his lover, uh, was going to throw herself into the sea because she was so heartbroken. But the gods uh, took mercy on her, I guess, um, and they changed the two of them into kingfishers. And then they provided a period of calm seven days before and after the solstice in December, when the seas would be calm and kingfishers could nest. And, and you know, hatch their eggs uh, in a quiet space so there would be no storms. These are the halcyon days. Sometimes uh, people attach halcyon days of our youth. Uh, periods when, when there are no cares, no storms, no concerns. So this first card is the pearl. Alchemy, the reward at the end, from grit to grace. You've been working on something. I don't know if it's you. Um, if you've been engaging. I sort of like that a little bit, than working on. Engaging with yourself. Exploring yourself finding out about yourself, who you are, what you want, um, what, you know, more of your true nature is underneath any masks or costumes that you've layered on yourself. And I think that it, there's been times when it's really felt like a slog or, or um, never ending perhaps, or uh, a grind. But you right there, a pearl has formed. So this seems 
like here that we start with a little bit of the story. So this card, Harif, I don't know if I'm saying that properly. Longing for home, homesick for the stars. So there was some sort of call, a longing in you. It may have been to find a home. It may have been to find um, a vocation. Something that you, you would do with, right? What were you going to do with your life? What was going to be your main occupation? What was it that was calling you? And so you immersed yourself. Training, learning, new hobbies, passions. Uh, you really, I think you really wanted wanted what was really true. Not a substitute, not whatever, you know, somebody else's idea of what you should do. Um, no, maybe something you learn through trying to fit in. But what, what was, what's the true thing? What is the true north? You know, the star who's here on a different deck is traditionally Aquarius's card in the Western esoteric tradition, or at least the Golden Dawn tradition. So the star, right, what was, what was your actual guiding light that was really yours? And not one that maybe you focused on because other people suggested it or it seemed like a good idea at the time. And maybe you've been doing all kinds of things. Trying different things, uh, taking workshops, uh, talking to different people, reading books, going on retreats trying new practices, like really diving deep into yourself, immersing yourself in your own consciousness. And I think you've been here for a long time, but you've surfaced. The Isle of Avalon, healing, returning to wholeness, transformation. Right, here you are again on the surface in your boat, no longer immersed. But maybe now in this, when, when this period was happening, it was a kind of integration. And this might especially be necessary if you did any um, really kind of intense work. You know, I, I have never taken part in an ayahuasca ceremony. But I have done kumbal. And Something that I sort of regret is that I didn't really spend some time after each combo ceremony in really thinking about it, in, in an integration. The ceremony itself was, was, you know, had a container, but there wasn't a bigger container around that. Because um, it was just a solo practitioner. It wasn't really within her compass, her resource to do that. 
And I do know people who have done ayahuasca, but who didn't really have an integration period afterward that was kind of, um, you know, that was a container. And I think you need that. And that this is still, this is still part of the exploration. Then there's the Hathors. Deep love, mother's milk, birth as portal. So this, this whole process that you were involved in, and it's possible that this is very specific. It might not be for your whole life. It may be in a very particular occupation. This immersion could be deep study of some topic. That, you know, right, reaching your PhD in a particular subject, going through a series of trainings to reach a certification or a level of mastery in something. Um, you know, doing this process for yourself prior to starting a business. Traditionally, when you start a business, you, you get a business plan and it's, you know, got lots of numbers and, and things and a solid concrete timeline and all of these things. But if you have a more spiritual bent, you might do a different sort of business plan where you've really immersed yourself in that. But whatever this is that you've been doing, right, it was also a portal. And you can kind of see it right here in the background. You, you have this longing you do the immersion, you rise up in your little boat, and then you go through the portal. And I feel like this, right, that this is a little bit you here, but it's kind of like you haven't taken that last step over the threshold. Or maybe you have and you just don't know it. because we have this two of swords and then right under it, this two of pentacles. So the sense of weighing things up, of a decision of some kind, right? Like you're still at a fulcrum point rather than, than fully somewhere. And actually there's this five of wands, which is my sort of quantum space card with all of these foxes, uh, the quantum timeline, the, the, um, oh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It's gone. Uh, the collapse of the wave, the collapse of the quantum wave has not yet happened. But I'm here to tell you that it has. Ace of Pentacles. You have crossed the threshold, I believe. Or I suppose if you haven't, you, you were really about to. But I think that you there's some little remaining part of you that's still attached to the previous space, to this grit. Um, under the grit card, under the pearl card, is this birth mysteries card. And then there's actually this cleansing card. So it's like there's something still clinging a little tiny bit of attachment 
here with this nine of swords. This, right, it's like you're right on the threshold, but you're looking back. You're looking behind you still at this kind of chaotic scene. And then this five of pentacles. It's like you can't, it's like you can't quite believe that you've made it, that you've done it. You know, that, that this thesis that you've written is really, really good. You worked on it, you've written and rewritten and edited, and you know, it's like you keep going back. Is it, right, is it just not quite perfect? You know, is there still something more? And then Ten of Swords. So this energy that wants to be released from you, right, to, to move on, right, to let this, right, it's like you're wrapped in this fabric that's kind of holding you. And you want to just release that. But so here, here's this little cupidy fellow handing you a pentacle. Now he's kind of, he's got a little side eye going on. If you can see it. Um, and I have the sense that, that he's sort of trying to look at me, actually. Like, I'm, I'm giving Aquarius this pentacle, I've got this pentacle, I'm holding it out. But Aquarius, right, it's a pentacle. But Aquarius isn't taking it. Right? We want Aquarius to take it. This page of pentacles. And maybe, maybe that's part of your problem. Actually. Maybe the idea of doing this means that you're back at the beginning. This is the page of pentacles. The youth, the novice someone who's new at the job. You know, once you, right, once you finish that PhD, then, then you have to you know, do the next thing. Maybe you have to teach, right? You have to find a job as a professor, or you have to begin your research career, or, you know, the next thing is writing a book. And it's something that is new to you. And maybe, maybe this is a little bit of what's keeping you focused in the past. Because this, right, you are, you are an expert, a master of whatever it is that you have just completed whether it's a self-exploration or a PhD or some other kind of certification or, you know, the building of something. Now you have to kind of, it may feel like you're beginning again. And so you are, but not from the place where you were. The place where you were is done. And here you are, Aquarius, King of Swords. You seem to be a little obsessed with the corpse. And you know how when we feel about that here on the channel, 
You gotta leave the corpse. No autopsy, no lengthy funeral service, no keening over the body. New focus. New focus. And I don't, you know, this is the 10 of pentacles. Um, but I don't think that that's so important. What's important is focusing on this new thing. Now, I think that since the Kingfisher and this idea of the halcyon days came out, that, that you are in this kind of calm period of rest. That you're not being asked to jump up and start the next project immediately. There is, this is a moment to relax. To, in fact, rest on your laurels. Right? To get dry. To get comfortable. To get well rested. To maybe spend a little time just sort of dreaming about nothing in particular. I mean, just, you know, taking time to just do something just because it sounds like fun. And we have that here with this messenger of air. You know, you are, are traditionally the king of air. And so there's something here about this childlike energy. That you can kind of put down the giant sword that you've got, that you've been carrying around. Just lay it down for a little bit. Take this moment to, you know, to really enjoy where you have arrived. Just enjoy it, a little enjoyment time, a little dreaming time, not planning, mind you, just dreaming, a little uh, joyful exploration that doesn't have any particular purpose other than that it's fun or relaxing. Right, with the seven of air, this, you know, exploring a little bit, you know, maybe getting into conversation with your invisible fellowship. Just, you know, not like actually talking with them. You know, no, right? You know, it's not something that we do very much, is it? Right? We, you know, we sit down with the cards or we get into meditation and we, right, we want answers. What do we do next? What's our problem? Why do we have this resistance? What's our future? What's my purpose? But just, you know, kind of chew the fat with our fellowship. You know, maybe, maybe explore something that you haven't before that's, you know, totally unrelated. Or maybe it's just to, you know, go lie in a hammock somewhere. Read fiction. Allow the wind to kind of blow through. And during that time, Right? This is a time of nourishment and replenishment. When your ace of water, your ace of cups is refilled. Not because you're taking action, but maybe because you're not.
is you take this time to rest and to take the win. Take the win. Where are the laurels? Rest on them. And then the three of water. And all of this, you know, A is, is wonderful in and of itself. And also, you know, it may, um, it may give you time to get back in touch with relationships. You know, if you've been really immersed in something, you may feel a little out of touch with friends and family. This can also be a really beautiful time to connect with other people, to celebrate, to have a party because you got here. Right? You handed in your thesis. Maybe you've even gone through defending it. And now you're in this space. Celebrate, Aquarius. So, advice. Of course, we have the devil showing up. Keeping yourself chained to the past to what was um, either because you're a little afraid of what's to come, right? The past is comfortable or because you can't quite believe that you made it. And right below the devil is naturally the ace of cups. So what's interesting here is the two cards that have come out here. In this deck, they are sort of non-traditional a little bit. So we have the five of staves, the five of wands, which is often shown as a competition. And here it's shown as collaboration. And then the seven of sacred circles or pentacles, which often shows as a figure waiting for the fruit to ripen, right? They've done all this work and now you gotta wait. But in this card, the waiting is over. I mean, not only has everything ripened, but it's all been collected. Maybe even by somebody else. And it's just here. And then interestingly, the king of staves, the king of wands, Leo, traditionally. And I do think that Leo, right, has perhaps a, a more natural relationship with relaxing, right? Like this lion back here who's asleep. You know, lions are, of course, powerful, but they're also big cats and they sleep a lot of time during the day. And you know, once the thing, right, they've, they've gone on the hunt, they've brought down the antelope, they've eaten it, and then they rest. Right, when there's nothing to do, they do nothing. They are, you know, fully relaxed into that space. They're not thinking, you know, their minds are not running ahead of them into the next meal. They really take the time. So this does seem to be, not surprisingly, about mindset, Aquarius. Um, I have this two of swords, nine of swords, ten of swords, ten of swords again, king of swords, seven of air, the messenger of air. Um, 
So lots of, right, lots of mental energy. So I think this is just, right, this is just a little mental shift that needs to be made. And it may be, Aquarius, that you have to make it several times before it really sort of sticks. And you really feel solidly in this new reality that you have created for yourself through all of your amazingness. So Aquarius, take the win. You have arrived. And uh, I'm very interested to see where where this goes. I mean, we have been through all the signs kind of in this, right? There's this sense through this whole year of all the signs doing, you know, kind of at their own pace. Reaching, right, this new place. And the moment of pause and go. And you are here in the pause, Aquarius, in the halcyon days. Enjoy them. Enjoy yourself, Aquarius. I wish you all the very, very best, and I'll see you next time so long.